Hey guys, we're going to read uh, The Bridge Home, chapter 29. Here we go. God's Worms. Overnight it poured and the graveyard became a swamp. You were coughing in concert with the buzzing hordes of mosquitoes and we were all slapping and scratching at our skin. Your skin looked the worst. It wasn't just bumpy with bites. It was dotted with red where you'd scratched so hard you'd bled. Ruku's the sweetest of us all, Muthu said. That's why the mosquitoes like her best. Looks like she really needs a rest, a rule shot me a worried look. You girls want to stay here this morning? Ruku wants to make necklaces. Your voice was hoarse. Hoarse is like, um, it's like rough or harsh. Like if your voice is like that, that's hoarse. Okay. But you grabbed your bag of beads and hugged it to your chest. Ruku wants to help. We decided we set up shop nearby so you wouldn't have to walk far in the rain. Slimy pink earthworms covered the sidewalk and the road, and we tried avoiding them as we walked, but you noticed one get squashed beneath a cyclist's tire. Awa! You pointed at it and rubbed your arm like you'd been hurt. Yes, I said, but it's just a worm. You looked at another squashed worm on the sidewalk. A voom. You laid it gently on your outstretched palm. Chee, Luthu said. Put that down, Ruku. Cutie nosed your elbow, trying to cheer you up. Aye, you pointed at the muddy earth surrounding a tree whose trunk had busted right through the sidewalk. Look, VG. Yes, those worms are alive, Ruku. Not dead, you remarked. Yes, I said. They're better off there in the mud for sure. A boom, you repeated. That worm's dead, Ruku. I tried to explain. Death was one of those things, like money, that I wasn't sure how well you understood. It's never going to move again, ever. You ran a finger along the dead worm's body, then picked it up again and put it on the earth around the tree. I think Ruku's hoping they'll come back to life if she puts them on the earth. A rule said, after all, the dead ones are only on the road or sidewalk. Excuse me, sorry. You're trying to save them, aren't you, Ruku? Ruku's the best helper. We found another dead worm on the pavement and put it on the earth. A rule wants to help? Can't, Ruku. He bit his lip and let a lifeless worm dangle between his fingers before he dropped it on the wet earth. They're dead. Gone. You can't bring them back to life. None of us can. You pouted, but refused to stop, transporting a third worm from the gray concrete onto the grassy earth. Maybe we're God's worms, Muthu said suddenly. What? A rule glared at him. I'm not being disrespectful, boss, Muthu star star uh, stared at the thickening rain. God must be so high up, we must look like worms to him. So when we're starving, he probably just feels like we feel when we see a worm die. A little sad, but not much. I guess God feels a little bit sad for us, but not enough to send us all food. I'd settle for God sending us a little less rain, I said. Then we could find our own food. Come on, Ruku, we can't stay here all day. Leave her be, a rule crouched down with you, patting your hand as you crooned to the dead worms. We're not sweet enough to mourn the worms. Someone should. So we stayed. A bus careered past and sprayed us with a fountain of rust-brown puddle water, drenching us. My blouse was plastered to my skin. Your new skirt was sopping wet below the raincoat that stretched only to your knees. You were shivering and coughing, but you started stringing beads while we sang, while we sang out. Bead necklaces, pretty bead necklaces. For the first time ever, a few beads rolled off your tired fingers, but you didn't stop until the, every last bead was gone. Your busy fingers made so many necklaces, Ruku. I still have one, the only one we didn't sell. And nights when I can't get to sleep here, I count the beads on it like it's my own kind of rosary. So at this point in the story, um, we know that... Um, Fiji's like looking back and thinking about um, this time that she was with Ruku making the bracelets and with the boys. Um, 
living in the graveyard for some abridge. Um, so we know that this she's looking back in time, like remembering it. Um, so our exit ticket question today is, what does Muthu mean when he says that they are God's worms? Explain. So what do you think that that means? Um, I think that it just means um, that Muthu feels like they are very small in the world and that um, maybe their problems aren't as like big as somebody else's, like kind of like a worm. People aren't really like thinking about them. And then he's um, comparing it to the way God is looking at them as if they're just very small. Um, but you might have a different interpretation. I look forward to reading what you read. And I'll see you guys for chapter 30. Bye.